hey what's up since everyone is talking about this will and jada um and chris rock uh incident i thought i'd share some of my specialties in here because i'm a hair replacement specialist for 30 years now hair enhancement hair replacement uh making custom made wigs and everything and specifically i like to talk about hair loss how it affects women what happens to women and what causes alopecia or how you get alopecia and i wrote a book called amazing hair organically the secrets of women with beautiful hair from around the world and so uh, I did a lot of research for many, many years because I grew up with a ton of allergies. I was very sickly until I got about 25 and started to, you know, become plant-based and um, change all the products in my home, the chemicals and everything like that because I found out that there's a lot of chemicals that do affect us that uh, we put on our skin, we put it in our bodies, you know, like preservatives, we put on our skin, we put in our hair. So I became, I don't want to say a purist, but I really started to pay attention. It's scary when people tell me that, oh, I don't, I don't ever get, I don't have no allergies. I can eat anything. That is scary. Like you shouldn't be able to eat anything. You should have, that means that your body is so desensitized to any foreign uh, chemicals, preservatives, things that come in your body, that you're so calcified, that, um, that your pineal gland is so calcified, that now you're numb and that's how you can end up getting a disease overnight and then just be out of here. And a lot of, and it, it has happened to a lot of people. So allergies, honestly, are our best friend. Listen to those allergies. If you're lactose intolerant, don't drink the milk. Why would you take a pill to make yourself not lactose intolerant when that is the way your body is? That's your chemical makeup. If you have certain allergies, pay attention to that. See why you can't eat those foods. Go on detoxing. You know, start really just watching what you need more of. And, and um, yes learn how to intuitively eat and drink and be mindful and um yeah stress can cause so many diseases so many things in the body so much inflammation toxicity buildup all kind of stuff stress can do in the body so um you know especially as if i'm, I'm talking to you know it's my sisters right now um, we've had this stereotype that we are strong and we're supposed to take all this stress and be strong. And really, we can't, you know, really, we've had a lot to deal with in this systemic, in this structural, uh, systemic um, climate or environment that we've had to survive and we've had to thrive through. And um, we are so used to, and, and especially too with, consuming a lot of, um, you know, death online and seeing all the, you know, police vitamin, um, violence and different things in, in media and financial stress and, and just, um, just all kinds of things. It puts us in a like survival mode. So the top three factors I'll say for most women are stress related, hormonal changes and endocrine system and add job stress with it and the microaggressions at work and the microaggressions when you get off of work and all those things can cause stress and trying to take care of your children. All those things are, um, you know, can cause a lot of stress in our bodies. And so, and body weakness from overwork is a real thing. You know, I know as women, we are... I know we are super women and we can do 10,000 jobs, but the facts are we just have to learn how to delegate. You know, we have to learn how to do more yoga, meditation, take those hot baths, um, you know, just be kind to yourself, journal more often, tell yourself you love you, heal yourself, get those life coaches, get those self help books. Um, you know, we have to do a lot of different things to relieve stress in our lives and everything. Change jobs if you need to. Go back to school. Whatever you need to do, you know, um, stress is a number one factor for um, taking out hair. Um, adolescence, 
pregnancy and menopause. Those are the three things that I know for sure that has to do with hormones that completely changes a woman's bodies and she could like just lose hair in patches because of the stress on the body. And the uh, endocrine system is um, a very interesting topic to talk about because uh, there's a lot of shampoos out there, a lot of products that disrupt our endocrine system about balancing your diet, your exercise, drinking the proper water, making sure that you have the proper nutrients and that your um, that your foods or what you're eating are complementing the vitamins and minerals that you're eating. You know those nutrients play a big part. Um, that nutrient nutrient intake. You know how I'll say like saying you like ginger and turmeric for um, inflammation. Well, it doesn't work. Turmeric doesn't work without black pepper. It needs that carrier. So lots of vitamins and minerals need a carrier as well. So as long as you're studying, researching, and knowing what proper things to do that and how to make sure that you're getting the proper vitamin D and the proper niacin and, and uh, I mean, I'm sorry, zinc and magnesium and B12, the B vitamins and omegas, which are very important for women's bodies. Um, making sure that you are cocktailing your nutrition and your vitamin mineral intake well and but um, menopause will take your hair out you know and this one is more on a serious side candida yeast yeast can cause alopecia in the body and do a lot of bad in the body it's, I mean it can you know the mucus build up the inflammation in the body, all kinds of stuff Candida does. And so it is um, very imperative, important that you get the yeast out of your body. Uh, that causes alopecia and lots of alopecia. And uh, there's a lot of factors. Um, alopecia is usually the first sign of a disease in your body. Um, most women who sat in my chair and come to get like a custom made wig or come get a weave or something and they start talking about um uh their why their hair when their hair fell out and when they got diagnosed they either, either had like lupus or candida overgrowth in their body or some kind of autoimmune deficiency autoimmune disease that um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis that cause the alopecia. You know, you can start helping to clear those out is to eat more alkaline foods. You know, start with the alkaline um, alkaline diet and, um, and it's fun. Alkaline is good. I eat alkaline for years now. And traction alopecia doesn't doesn't just happen in the black community with braiding. Traction alopecia also um, um, affects people who wear micro beads or micro links. I remember when I worked in Vegas and um, I had a private room and there was a guy who had a semi-private space that was right directly across from me and I could look out my window and see him. And all of his clients were like, you know, the blonde bombshells of Las Vegas, um, other than my clients. I had some blonde bombshells too, but <laughs> but um, he did only micro links and he used to charge like $1,500 to $3,000 for them and they were paying it, you know. And um, anyway, he never let them see what he was doing. He always turned them away from the mirror. And I saw, you know, when you work in a salon together over four years, you, you, see, you see the same people over and over again. You recognize other people's clients. So I would see like these women would have, you know, the platinum blonde hair. And then when he took those things out, they would have so many bald spots and areas because over time they kept getting those things and they wanted more and more fullness and tighter and um, he didn't have the proper silicone tubing inside of him. So those women end up being bald headed and they had to keep coming and get them because they were bald headed. So when you're 
blonde and your half of your identity is in your hair and you have this long you know playboy bunny hair or whatever and then it's half bald headed when you lift it up you're not gonna let it grow out you might I mean now people have more options with wigs and stuff like that they can wear wigs and let their hair grow out but at that time you know they just had to keep getting them and when i saw that and i was doing micro links at the time as well um, but it made me very particular about what kind of clients I did and to understand how to give the proper, um, the proper consultations about them and let them know how many sessions or times they could get them and just really be able to give that thorough consultation of how to wear micro beats, micro links, and when to stop wearing them. Now, I used to do, in Vegas, I used to do, I think I had like probably around 30 or 40 fitness and body, body, what do you call them? Body building competitors, body building competitors. Yes, that's what the word is. Um, lots of them. And let me tell you, about 95% of them were very unhealthy because in order to get that type of lean body mask, you have to damn near starve yourself. You have to eat very specifically. You know, you have to eat. A lot of them for years was on chicken breasts and broccoli. That's it. You know, and maybe peanut butter every now and then. But very specific diets. And then took a, um, a whole bunch of engineered uh, nutrition, no pow powders and stuff like that. And they relied on those things. But, you know, they had to eat a very specific way to shred and get the weight off and just expose that muscle so that they can compete. And a lot of them were at the top of their fields. I mean, I've had a lot of competitors that were in over 10 who won national and um, international championships, but knowing them over time, they end up getting sick. They end up having, you know, their bodies breaking down and having their organs, you know, just collapse inside of their body and, and a lot of organ issues because of those nutrients. And one of the main factors that you'll see with a lot of bodybuilders with women and men is they lose their hair. That hair begins to thin out. It gets very thin because they are nutritionally deficient. Um, that doesn't go for them. I mean, there's other people as well. So just because, so my point is you may have, you know, that physical appearance of health, but nutritionally, nutrient wise, you know, a thick, a thicker person could be more healthy, more healthier than you, than, than that person by a hundredfold. Seriously, I've, I've I've done people's hair for years. I've seen it. I've had to visit people in the hospital. I've seen people, you know, literally call me and be like, I'm in a hospital. I can't get, I have to cancel my appointment because my organs broke down. You know, I have to eat more better or whatever like that. You know, I've, I've heard all the drama. So uh, nutrients are very important, especially as we get older, over 30, 40, especially 40s and 50s and beyond. You should be making sure that you learn your body so that you can take the right nutrients. Thank you for joining me. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments. Like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with someone that may need it about alopecia. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a great week.